Lupus is a systemic, it's a complex autoimmune disease. And being an autoimmune disease, you have your immune system that goes awry, wherein you have antibodies that are developed versus your own self, and we call them autoantibodies. And since this is something like a coup d'etat that happens inside the body, and you have all these autoantibodies coupling with your autoantigens, and they circulate in the body, in the system, and they can lodge in various organs and tissues. And when they lodge there, that is where they incite an inflammatory process. And when you have an inflammatory process, that is the one that translates itself to clinical manifestations. Uh, as a systemic autoimmune disease, nobody exactly knows what the cause is, but there are so-called triggers. You do have, there's a genetic predisposition uh, which is uh, shown in the fact that twins, for example, identical twins have a greater susceptibility to develop lupus uh, among sisters or siblings who are identical twins. That's the role of genetics, but it's a multigenic disease or it's a polygenic disease. And then you have the triggers. So you may have positive tests, but you do not show the symptoms. You will not be diagnosed as lupus clinically until there comes a trigger. And the trigger comes from an environment or environmental trigger, like for example, ultraviolet rays or sunlight. You can have stress, you can have viruses that can trigger off the autoimmune process and then show off as clinical manifestations of the disease. The usual peak age of onset is the young adults. Peak age of onset is about 27 to 28, but we have people who are diagnosed with lupus at um, five years old in childhood. And then we have a few who go off are diagnosed during adulthood. That's a little bit rare, but it's really more of a young disease with young adults. Females, by the way, are predominantly affected uh, with a ratio of about nine females to one male. It's a female disease, but we do have males at least 50% of our lupus patients have some form of kidney involvement. And that kidney involvement can start off quietly, silently, and then when it flares and becomes active, it can come with a bang. These patients can present with hypertension, these patients can present with swelling or what we call as edema, and uh, these patients will require aggressive therapy to preserve their kidney function. It's one that we need to diagnose early even if the symptoms may not be that obvious at the outset. The objectives of treatment of any lupus patient is that it's a highly, highly individualized disease. And when you say individualized, every treatment regimen has to be tailored to the individual patient because no two lupus patients are ever the same. And many times these patients are not diagnosed at once because symptoms come one at a time, they evolve over time. It's only later on that uh, they are diagnosed with lupus when all the symptoms now start piling up. The challenge is also who makes the diagnosis of lupus. Typically, it is usually the rheumatologist. And the rheumatologist makes the diagnosis of lupus. We do have classification criteria for lupus that we look into. But rheumatology is a rare breed, for example, in the country and maybe all of, over the world. There is a, a shortage of rheumatologists, especially on the aspect of lupus, and which is why it is so important that lupus is one that concerns every clinician, as you could see. They can present with rushes, they see a dermatologist, they can present with fatigue, or they can even present with seizures. So they see different kinds of physicians. And here is where we have established some kind of a networking with the primary care physician or the non-rheumatologist. And I always say it takes a village to treat one lupus patient. So we have to have coordination with them. The other thing is, of course, when you have rheumatologists, they're mostly in Metro Manila. So what about the remote areas? So we reach out to them and then thanks to telemedicine, we now have a way of connecting with other uh, doctors or other physicians who may encounter a lupus patient or suspect a lupus patient. 
then we can have more coordination, establishing the diagnosis, and establish a treatment plan tailored for each patient. Very important is the care, the support, and the understanding. I have seen a lot of lupus patients. They go into challenging times. They are hospitalized for patients who do not have a family. The prognosis seems to be poor. Whereas for those who are all out, you have their family support, even if they have very, very difficult times or very difficult to manage lupus, these patients have a better prognosis. So that is where family support Carer support, the caregiver, love is more important than anything else. It's the caring and the understanding. You don't need to know or memorize everything about lupus. It is just feeling and, of course, coordinating with the doctor. So physician, patient, caregiver, uh, they're all very important in the care of one lupus patient.